I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast with your favorite humans in the whole planet, April and Amy. But guess which one I am? You are Perry. No, he's here being on his best behavior. That's my yes, dog. She, yes, she is. I can't tell you all how hard You're it is Amy. to you record. You're Amy. tell everybody. Sorry, I'm Amy. Um, <laughs> how hard it is to record with two small dogs, especially my dog. And, and if you listen regularly, you're like, we've heard enough about your fucking dogs. But it is a scene over here to try to get this shit done. <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh, my Could God. Could you imagine if we had small children? Uh, thank God for my mom tomorrow who is taking Perry for the day while we record two episodes. I do want to give a shout out to my animal, who's an absolute the best legend, and his oh. name is Legend, Legendary Lampert. Perry, he, why can't be you be more like your brother? Yeah, that's right. Sorry, as he's w- so quiet and in beautiful animal. And when I said that, see, that was shaming. See, I told you about his sand turd that he took last night. <laughs> 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 he, we, t- we went to the beach yesterday for a long time it was beautiful in Santa Cruz it's November 21st yesterday This we're recording this on the 22nd of November 2021 and we went to the beach yesterday because it was so warm I wasn't there I know you weren't there, but you Legend was there. Yeah. And so I didn't realize maybe he was eating sand. <laughs> and so last night he woke me up at, I don't know the hour because I didn't check. And he was scratching to get outside like it was an emergency situation. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on? I've never seen him like that. And then this morning I looked and he took a huge sand turd. <laughs> like it was like it disintegrated like, t- like sand. Was I he was looking like, for sand crabs? I don't know what he was doing, but it was disturbing to say the least. I hope it cleans out his <laughs> intestines. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, maybe. I hope so. Like you know, that it's all like um, grinding along the sides, yeah, making it's like it all look sandpaper. Like smooth. Yeah. All right. So uh, all the listeners that we just lost, um, sorry. <laughs> you think we lost them? No. I think it's interesting. I think it's very interesting. Have you ever eaten sand and taken a sand turd? I don't think so. I Me mean, either. probably an accident. But uh, have you <laughs> hey, really? Have you ever eaten cat food? No. What? You have? You've never tried cat food? Have you ever tried your dog's food? <laughs> yeah, to make sure it was oh good. Oh my God, I never have done any of those things. What? Disturbing to you, me. You didn't try the brand that we're not sponsored by, so I won't name, that you told me to give my dog, and I wanted I wanted to make sure that it actually tasted so what like... Did, no, I've never done... Did you eat cat, kitty litter ever? No. <laughs> All right, let's no. get back to the show here. No, that's I'm gross. not going to grill you about this right. after we're done recording because now I'm very in- interested. We'll talk about this later. This is intriguing. <laughs> yeah, so, anyways, uh, I was an only child, so sometimes you <laughs> ate cat food. <laughs> you got curious. You killed bugs. You oh, ate cat man. food. It's what you did. Uh, so this episode is not about bugs. Wait, did you have cats? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, so that makes so, me feel better. <laughs> what do you think? I was like five on Amazon or something. <laughs> There was no, I was at my neighbor's house. There was no Amazon then. You were like, do you have any cat food? <laughs> yeah. I'm hungry. I really want to try that shit. Let's well, was crunch. it like the meow, 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 uh, meow? Well, my mom's listening as we speak. So and she can, she'll message me and let me know mom, what kind of cat food it what was. What kind of cat food? It's probably like Costco brand or something. Oh my God. We have to move this conversation now to threesomes. So yeah, this is actually going to be a really interesting episode. It's not going to be about kitty litter, just so you know. Um, it's going to be. There is someone named Cat, though. Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i didn't even put that together i was hoping for a drop at some point okay. with that one glad you figured that Pun one out intended so threesomes swinger resorts and sexy house parties with the two hot wives that's the number two podcast ams and cat uh and if you're not into these things, uh, let's just say it's pretty entertaining. So you might as well take a sneak peek and stay with us in our kitty litter. I learned a lot about sexy house parties on this show. Threesomes, 
interesting. Also, they have just a great amount of information to share about adjusting to jealousy when you want to open a relationship and, and being swingers and Married the alternative children lifestyle. Of, yeah, the lifestyle yeah. community, as as I believe it's called. Oh, yeah. yeah, the the I'm doing Married airports. with children? Well, Are they're married with children. Love and no, Malrus. Oh, <laughs> love and Malrus. I knew that was coming. Go together <laughs> like a wholesome carriage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, so stay tuned because it's going to get real interesting. If it's already <laughs> not interesting to you, are you ready for a sex question, though, Chip? I am. I'm pumped for this, this sex question. All right. So I gave her a little sneak peek, so she actually kind of knows what we're talking about, but she has no idea what we're going to say. So it's a, <laughs> it's a load of fun. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. So, 25-year-old penis-owning male here. I'm sort of insecure about my load size. My girlfriend made a comment about it, and it's kind of stuck with me. Is there anything I can do to increase it? Maybe jacking off less than my average of two times a day, perhaps? Also, my testicles are on the smaller side, and they don't really hang much. Could this be a factor? Do women mind ball snap? Ball size, nice. Ball size. Um, that's a lot of questions. Well, I would say, can I address one of the questions? Your testicles are smaller and they don't hang much. Just give it twenty years, honey. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about that. Don't. Worry okay. About that. They yeah. will hang just fine. They will find their Gravity way. Gravity is a hell of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Every everything finds its way just Down. kind of downwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so. <clears throat> The answer to this, so I, I'm going to speak from a personal place of um, the preference, I'd, I'd say. Uh, I really don't give a fuck about load size. Do you? How do you feel about it? Load size, ball size, mean nothing to me. Not at all. So, no. okay. So, you have tiny balls and tiny load size. You'd be like, cool. Actually, like tiny balls would be cool because they're easier to fit into my tiny mouth. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, no, uh, that makes perfect sense. And so, okay, fun fact. When I was 18... 36 now. I had a girlfriend, a uh, lady friend, uh, who was obsessed with big balls, though. A friend that was a... They could be, lady friend. Like a friend. Oh, yeah. Okay. Friend. But was a, a vulva-owning individual who was like, oh, my God, I'm dating this guy, and he has the biggest balls, and I love them. Now, that was her. For me, big balls, I'm like, big balls are great. Small balls, they're great. Saggy balls, they're great. Uh, not so saggy balls, they're great. Yeah, you know, I, I actually personally don't really care about the balls and or what the they're doing. That load much. size is that important to you? No, you and in no, fact, no. like the more load, the uh, not better <laughs> or not uh, just for the, you. The more challenging to deal with it depends on what we're doing, of course. And like, so I'm not. But as I say that, so I also have a friend who loves the money shot. They love come all over their face, all over their chest. They love the visual of seeing all of the ejaculate on their bodies. I don't get off to that. I'm not really attracted to that. So if there's just a little bit of like drop, 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 fine. If there's a lot, my friend, really going to like you. So speaking to this person, your girlfriend made a comment. I'm wondering what the comment was. It stuck with you. Oh, but was it, um, you, know, you don't really come a lot or when you do, it's small. Um, are they saying that they want more? Did they directly say that? Um, is there ways that you can do to increase this? I actually don't have the answer to that I question. I wonder if there's a correlation between diet and, uh, I don't know about age, but diet, because I feel like diet is something to do with your load size. Hydration. So I think there is a correlation. And I don't have the science in front of me because I didn't do any research on this question. However, you're 25, you fucking know how to use Google. So yeah. I would recommend <laughs> probably Googling load size and in correlation to your diet and and hydration. So, uh, do you remember that someone asked us this together? And we won't say the what? name, but when together we were, out? we were out somewhere, and someone asked us this, and and we said we don't have the answer to this. Go ask Doctor Willow Brown. Because someone did ask us. Th that yes, was not I'll tell you later who it was. Oh my god! And, I and we now. said go ask who's Doctor Willow Brown has been on our podcast many times. She's a Taoist sexologist who works with people with their hormones, their body fluids, the way their body reacts to sexuality, etc. She and was the one that gave me a massage and did something weird to my ear, and I started salivating in my mouth. See, so she could probably increase the load size. And weird, I mean. It was it was felt really nice. Oh yeah, she's healed my pussy a couple yeah. times. I didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> you, but I was like, that's an important piece. So, so uh, we're not going to uh, go and try to Google this and actually give you the information. Like all I have is uh, hydration. At least I can speak for pussy fluid has so much to do with it. When I'm dehydrated, I don't have as much pussy fluid. When I'm hydrated, I have more, and I would imagine the same also goes for load size. But if you really want to dive into this, maybe go check out some of the episodes with Dr. Willa Brown. Send her some messages. Maybe work with her and the jacking off part. Yeah, um, 
I'm pretty sure that the more you jack off, one, the more um, uh, erectile and ejaculatory control, control you might have in that in that mo- in that day. Also, you're using those fluids. So the next time you use those fluids, when you're having sex with your partner, you're going to have le- less fluids. That's just is kind of a natural part of the process. We also, when we recorded with Fabien, Anique, she was talking about semen um, retention. Retention. Which, no, I was like going to say rejection. No, that's, semen retention. And that episode's not out yet, just so you know. Oh. In the next month, everyone, it will be out. But we recorded it just, yes. Yeah. Okay, so it'll be releasing soon. And and just like your ejaculate, <laughs> uh, you, there is something to say about retention, semen retention. And I also am not an expert on this topic at all. I only have participated in interviewing folks that are, and this is a thing, there is something to say about the retention that she spoke to when the episode releases that can be beneficial for someone to maybe sa- save up their their, their chi yeah. or their energetic release uh, t- for uh, perhaps, and, and that that's trial and error though. It, everybody's different, so we can't speak to something perfectly like a, a perfect system or there's not a methodology that we can say turn the switch and then you're going to be great it doesn't work that way and what she says also is that it just increase, increases your energy and your stamina but I would imagine it also increases your load because you're pre- preserving it and there's more and more load you hear the term blue balls and they're like I need to do something with this you know so it's my schmeagle voice kind of I need to do something with this well, load I, it'd be interesting if this uh, listener that asked the question if uh, he attempted or no, yes, he, uh, he attempted to trial and error some of these different techniques or these different tools that that are out there. Try and not masturbating or ejaculating for four days and see what your load looks hydrate, like. Hydrate, drink some electrolytes, yeah, a lot of fluids, yeah, and uh, and then save your your load and. And then go on with your with your partner and see if that load is big. Maybe, Maybe use a load little, her up. little yeah, test tube and collect it and <laughs> see how big it gets. There you go. Do you can fill up the Uber Loop a sample thing. collection. The oh, Uber Loop sample vials. vials. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uber Loop is not how happy you said that at all. Vials of <laughs> Uber Loop. Could and you do? Lastly, what I'll say in April, we both said this multiple times. We can't tell you. Do women mind ball size? Do like do women want a big load? Everyone is so different. But what we can tell you is here's some tips here's some ways you can explore this and everyone is really different and if this is important to you you want a big load size then perhaps you can learn how to increase that your partner wants a big load size okay perhaps you can learn to work with that and everyone is different so um thank you for asking this question it's actually been really fun and maybe after this we shall go call willow brown and see we will we'll we'll text her and ask her because she moved to hawaii now so she's four hours behind us oh but she will talk to us because she's got all the answers sure will um all right so anyways before we do to dive into the bio uh, about AMs and cat, not cat litter, but cat. <laughs> Let's talk about one of our beloved sponsors, omgs.com. Uh, so omgs.com, they've been with us, what, four years Since now? Since almost years the very now? beginning. Uh, more, I think, four years. And I've known about OMGS even before they worked with Shameless Sex uh, because I, as a sex and relationship coach, I've seen OMGS change my clients' lives. OMGS.com is a online resource for you to learn about how to pleasure the pussy. Soon there will be seasons, soon meaning, who knows, a year or two on penises as well. But right now, season one is all about external stimulation for the pussy, for the vulva. Season two is all about internal stimulation Oh, isn't season three coming out? Season three is coming out tentatively. And hopefully, remember, this is a research-based... Pro, it's not even a program. It's a research-based company that is uh, very in, in tune with education. And they s- predict December. It could For be the, a little bit later. Of 2021. Of 2021. So and, and it, they study with 20,000? 20,000 people between the ages of 18 to 95. And they're all real humans. Real humans. So figure out the, how, how do they pleasure themselves? How do they have the orgasms that they have? And you, it's not a subscription. You just buy a season, you buy two seasons, buy one season, whatever. One-time payment. One-time payment. And it, you get to learn all these different techniques. It's not porn, although I'm sure you get off to it. But it's educational and it might change your life. Go check out OMG yes.com slash shameless you get 10 percent off and it is very very also i want to recommend it would be a good gift for the holidays Fuck because yeah. it's something that you can use anytime you can access it buy once give it to someone and they can use it anytime if i was a single person and i had like five lovers i would give it to all of them are you ready for a bio yeah we're on fire today, by the way. I do. Yeah. Wanna, I want to. I want to say that. Woo, 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 woo. And Ams and Cat, who I'm going to read their bio, they're also on fire. So 
Let's mm-hmm. do this. Mm-hmm. Ams and Cat, hosts of the Two Hot Wives podcast, that's number two Hot Wives podcast, are on a mission to create a community where like-minded women can explore their sexual interests and embrace great sex as the ultimate in self-care. Both are deeply committed wives and mothers exploring sex on their own terms. Now they have a podcast together and talk about open marriages, kink and BDSM, meeting couples to play with, seeing their partners with someone else, and the joy that phenomenal sex brings to their lives. To learn more, visit twohotwives.com. Remember, that's the number two, hotwives.com. But first... This holiday season, one of our beloved sponsors, Everlywell, can help you give big. By gifting an Everlywell at-home lab test, you're giving your loved ones more comfort, clarity, self-discovery, and joy and well-being. Everlywell offers affordable at-home physician-reviewed lab tests that give you trusted results. Choose from tests including food sensitivity, sleep and stress, thyroid, STDs, and so much more. I personally love the ease Everlywell offers when it comes to discovering and understanding how to take care of my body. I took the metabolism test, and now I know so much more about my hormone levels and how to maintain a metabolism rate for ultimate energy. They make it easy by shipping your test straight to your door with everything needed for a simple sample collection. All you do is return the test with the prepaid shipping label and your results and insights are sent to your device in just days. So what are you waiting for? This holiday, give more of what matters with an Everly Well at-home lab test. And for our listeners, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash shameless. That's everlywell.com slash shameless for 20% off your at-home lab test. Everlywell.com slash shameless. All right, let's dive into that interview. All right, everyone, it is episode time, and we are here with Ams and Kat of the Two Hot Wives podcast. So we guessed on their podcast, I don't know, a couple months ago, six months ago, something like that. May. May. Okay, so what month are we in now? October? I have no idea. Okay, so anyways, (laughs) a while ago, um, a while ago, and it was super fun. We were talking about anal on their podcast. So if you want to go listen to us on their podcast or just listen to their podcast, there'll be plenty of opportunities here for you to learn about how to do that. You already heard a little bit in the bio. But this one, now they're on our show, and we're here to talk to them about three Sims, swinger resorts, and sexy house parties. So these are two married women who are experiencing all these wonderful things. And so I'm going to start with the same prompt that we always do with all of our speakers. How the F, I don't usually say that, but how the <laughs> fuck, I'm just kidding, did you get to where you are today in the world of sexuality, both in your personal lives and then also starting a podcast? That is oh, wow. so much in one tiny <laughs> little question. All right, let's 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 break that down. Um, this is Ams. Uh, I'm a long-time married uh, uh, couple, and about three years ago, my husband and I basically decided we needed to not take each other for granted. We wanted to have more fun in our marriage, so we went to a bar and got really, really drunk and just sort of brainstormed all the ways that we could have more fun. A kink. BDSM, that kind of came into the conversation. So we checked out dungeons and we got like lots of toys off of Amazon. Jeff Bezos was like, what the fuck is going on over there? (laughs) Um, And uh, it was at a dungeon that we learned the term lifestyle, like lifestyle dating and the lifestyle community. We had no idea what that meant. We came home, we Googled it and found some events that were happening near where we lived and sort of jumped in like straight into the deep end, met couples, started dating couples, and it completely changed our lives. We had better communication, a better sex life between the two of us. It made our marriage just phenomenal. And it was through lifestyle dating that we met Kat and Mr. Kat and became very, very close friends. There was that immediate connection. Um, And, uh, you know, through the relationship we had between the four of us, we started talking about the fact that there weren't a lot of podcasts out there where two women who are married are talking about the challenges that they have with sex and the adventures and journeys and, and experiences that they have with sex. So we wanted to give it back to the community. We learned so much from podcasts like yours. Um, and uh, we wanted to put out the information that that we had and entertain people and, and tell them all the crazy, sexy stories that we have. 
How about you, Kat? Yeah, wow. Yeah, Kat, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Mic <know>. drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same exact experience. No. <laughs> so I'm Kat. Um, Mr. Kat and I started talking about this kind of thing uh, about four or five years ago. Um, we were happily married for about 20 years, mm-hmm. two kids, and uh, we just wanted to find ways to have more fun. Um, he was going to be traveling, and so we were going to be apart quite a bit. And to kind of make things fun, when he would come home, he would send me a lot of erotica. So he was sending me stories, and it was a lot of fun, and I'd send back stories. He sent most of the stories, but um, but the, the stories got more and more exciting and more and more um, sexy and just, you know, started to dive into the whole lifestyle topics. And so when he would come home, everything was all exciting and and we were so excited to see each other and sex was really exciting and hot. And and we would talk all about these stories. And finally, it just sort of evolved to, hey, is this something that you're really interested in? Is this something you want to explore? Um, And so we started listening to some podcasts and it got very interesting, and neither one of us felt threatened by the idea, and so we just we talked about it for a very, very long time. Mm. And finally, we just decided to just go for it. So we um, we put our profile up on a couple of couples dating sites, um, and we actually went on some very fun uh, clothing optional vacations, which was really crazy and really fun, and then when we met Ams and Mr. Ams, they were going on that vacation. So it really sparked some fun conversation. Mm-hmm. And and we just started hanging out a lot. Um, yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then COVID hit and we were hanging out a lot, yeah. <laughs> just the four of us really and, and our, our families and stuff. And, and we just became super close and started talking and about, you know, how could we share this and share this friendship that we've made and that's it. Mm-hmm. Rest is history. So. That's a good story. Yeah. And I, I commend you for being, number one, vulnerable and sharing your stories as as uh, folks that have kids. You, right? P- people, a lot of times, they, they can be curious about things or want these to explore these types of, of lifestyle, uh, l- l- living the lifestyle life, if you will. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it can be also feeling shameful. It was my community, my, my standard community that I live in, are they going to accept me? And so I just want to commend both of you and your partners, um, for just being vulnerable and sharing your story and normalizing the curiosity and the lifestyle. So thank you for that. And um, there will be a question in there. I just wanted to give you a shout out because uh, I do, I I value it. And it brings me to this conversation around, um, obviously threesomes are hot. Like people are always into threesomes and um, monogamy as a whole, like you both, I think, uh, Kat, you said 20 years you've been married and Mm -hmm. Ams, how long have you been married? 17. 17. So this is a long time. So you've built this strong foundation with your partners. So let's talk about ethical non-monogamy because that technically is what you're living in, right? And um, how that's impacted your relationship. Some of the hardships mixed with the good ships, if that's good ships. Ooh, I like that that term. Good (laughs) ships. The good ships. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So for us, it has been predominantly hugely positive in our life. You're talking about like Shirley Temple, a good chip lollipop, but like (laughs) this idea that the world is all of a sudden in technicolor, you know, we Mm -hmm. had a great marriage. We had good, respectful, loving sex, but we just didn't even know how great sex could be because really our, the majority of our experiences were were with one person. So when we started to open up our marriage, um, play with new partners, meet new people, just have open conversations about sex with other people, we could take all of that knowledge home. And like a random Wednesday night was all of a sudden (laughs) mind-blowing. And, uh, you know, I, I keep thinking that the sex just can't get any better or I will die. I, I will just <laughs> drop dead one day. But it it just keeps building out and getting better. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of the, you want to talk about the bad stuff? Is there any bad stuff? I don't know. Thanks or, for or, that. <laughs> yeah, you get the bad stuff. <laughs> She's like, damn stuff. it. <laughs> um, you know, there's, I would say, I we haven't really experienced a lot of bad stuff. I mean, Mm. we've been married for 20 years. We're really pretty close. And if there's anything that's happening, that's not, you know, exactly what we want, we just talk about it. We don't, I I, I tend to be 
pretty open with Mr. Cat. You know, if I don't like something, I say, you know, I wait. <laughs> I wait until later, you know, when things aren't happening You're not in triggered. the moment. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I just say, you know, I wanted to talk about, you know, what happened the other night that really, you know, I wasn't really very comfortable with this or with that. And it's no big deal. I, I think, you know, sometimes we think these things have to be traumatizing or, or the end all be all awful thing that happens and we have to make a huge deal out of it. Sometimes if we just use our motherfucking words and just, you know, be reasonable, be, be open about it and not put, uh, intentions on the other person, right? It's, Mm. it's never his intention to hurt me or to upset me. Um, What about jealousy? Because that's always something I struggle Mm -hmm. with. Yeah. I was thinking about that or or like that fear of like, what if you find someone better than me? What if he's fucking this woman right in front of me and then he's going to leave me for her? And this is like my fear shit, right? I'm projecting. Well, I think about a lot of people (laughs) resonate with that. There's this fear of like, okay, but what if you have a hot, amazing sex with someone? There's deep connection, deep alignment. Granted, y'all are married. I think we both said you have kids. And so you have a lot of things that are locked in where it's just not the back door is not that easy to go through. No Um, pun intended. No pun intended. (laughs) (laughs) Or, well, maybe it is actually. Check out the anal episode. Or check out the anal episode and a lot of Uber loop. But, um, yes. but, but yeah, so I guess, yeah, like April Jealousy. said, like, well, how do you guys navigate that? Yeah, it, that's probably the number one question that we get all the time. Get yeah. is how do you tackle jealousy? Well, and I think sometimes people just have that in them. They have a tendency to be jealous. Yeah. You know? And I think it, it just takes a lot of conversations. It's, uh, I think of it this way, like, We've been together for 20 years. We have a lot of history. We know each other real well, really well, to where we can have a conversation about anything. Is he really going to start that over again with someone else? (laughs) A lot of work. (laughs) No way. No way. And, you know, he, and I think, you know, Mr. Ams is probably the same way. Lots of reassurance, lots of check-ins with each other, lots of conversations before and after about how fun that was and, and just sensitivity to what the other person is feeling sort of clues you into what kinds of things, you know, you need to to be aware of. If if there's a, a point at which I felt Mr. Cat was was feeling, I don't know, insecure or jealous, I would definitely take a step back and, and check in with him and make sure that that, you know, I cut that off right away. So that he didn't I don't want him to feel that. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing uh, to bear in mind is ethical non-monogamy is not for everybody. You know, it's we're living our truth. This is like uh, authentic and true to us and to our marriage. But it's not something I would recommend for everybody. If you don't have a, a solid foundation in your relationship, you don't need to be married. But if you're, you know, in a committed relationship that's really solid, this might be something that you want to um, experience. Well, and if there's already jealousy that comes up quite often, yeah. this is not going to be for you. Right. That's the flag waving red. You're like, yeah. Okay, and that's why I say, like, yeah. So, yeah. for some relationships, that's just a part of the relationship. So it's yeah. probably not a, a good sign Let's, that you should join the lifestyle. Yeah. But, but on the flip side, uh, it's okay to get a little uncomfortable. That's where we grow. Right. And we Mm -hmm. live in this society that is like scared to death of being uncomfortable at all. But but having some, uh, you know, feelings of discomfort, feelings of I would say FOMO happens more than jealousy. Like if if Mr. Ams is having an experience by himself and I'm at home, like washing the dishes and dealing with the kids, sometimes I feel, you know, like sad little Cinderella. Why am I scrubbing out the pots and pans? Um, But I can sit with those feelings and acknowledge them and say, okay, that's a normal feeling to have, but it's not the, you know, it's not going to ruin my relationship and I can let him know. And, And we just plan better the next time so that that doesn't come up. Mm. Yeah, and I, it's also with jealousy too. So there's a couple because you can look at it in so many ways. Like you, jealousy could be you know, a lot of people like neg- you know negative thing. Jealousy, it's a bad thing to feel, and it's a bad thing to put on someone else. And you know, but like it's so normal. First of all, but also I heard people kind of do a spin on it and call it possessive mm, and I'm okay. doing like a sexy thing when I talk about mm, it like mm, I'm you know I mm-hmm. like some people like the feeling of being possessed and but still like can do some hot wifing shit or whatever where like I'm yours and you you know I'm you possess me I'm, I'm possessed you, you're you're the one that gets to fuck me or take me home at the end of the night or gets to spend most of my the time with me 
And I'm also going and having these hot experiences is something that could be a turn on. So I think we can also re- reframe, yeah, talking about jealousy and managing it within ourselves because it's just another experience or emotion. But also we can reframe it in a way. It reminds me of Kristen, mm-hmm. our, our friend Kristen, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. who just has this wonderful, not just with, I don't even think she talked about jealousy, but she reframes everything. And how can we make it erotic? You She's know? been on our show. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I love yeah. that idea. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. add it into your dirty talk. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, or, and, yeah. Reclamation yeah. sex can be phenomenal. And if you're having those feelings of jealousy, like throwing your man on the bed and saying you're mine and like taking him can be a really hot erotic experience. Yeah. Like I know someone else just got, got to touch your body, but I'm going to show you. I just, my, my went on a bit. I think, I, I think I talked about this on our podcast, maybe, but I went on a business trip and my partner was like, I want to, let's, let's play with some really light hot wifing and we're not married, um, hot wifing, hot dating, whatever you want to call it experiences while you're gone. And, um, and I was like, okay, well, we don't really know what this is going to look like. And I went on a, um, a completely ethical, date with someone that I actually had a history with that I had never had penetrative sex with them. Anyways, I had, had hooked up with them before multiple times and um, and they happened to be in the same town that I was on this business trip with. And, and so my partner knew about it and we were playing with it and playing with like the hotness of it and like, you know, sent him a photo of us together and all of that. And um, and we didn't hook up, you know, we still went out and it was just very flirtatious and we like, you know, we're holding hands and we ha- held had a lot, you know, really long hug and a little kiss on the cheek as we left him. We even asked the server who was waiting on us for, you know, two or three hours when we were out. We're like, I wonder what she thinks about what's going on here right now. Because <laughs> because we clearly look like we know we're, we're on a date. I was like, did she think it was like a Tinder date? You're like, or... your tip is not going to depend yeah. on this. <laughs> what? I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this her. Time. So so I was like, I'm going to ask her about what she thinks about this. What if she said brother, sister? I would have been <laughs> like, <"Yeah."> what? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to ask her. I was like, just so you know, he, he's paying. He's got a lot of money. No, just kidding. Well, actually, that was actually pretty true. But um, anyways, um, you just won't, you're, won't hurt your tip. Um, what do you think are our relationship is here and she's like honestly I think you've known each other for 10 years you're good friends you've hooked up before and you're kind of reconnecting either starting wow. date again or reconnect we've actually known each other for 12 years we have hooked up multiple times we were and we're not dating again and we are not um, you know like going down that route but like she was actually kind of spot on I was like triple her tip you're like, do you want to do that <laughs> <laughs> but but then so here's the thing Super filled up, super charged with my partner, feeling the hotness around it, even though it was just very, very light, this more like flirtation and conversation about it. And I went home and we were just like, actually, unfortunately, I went home, we were super turned on and, and then like some heavy information dropped and then I ruined everything. But, oh, <laughs> but, I, but it's like a really mild version of I know what you guys are, are speaking to and I understand. And so so I'm hearing that it, it can supercharge your relationship, you all chose it uh, together, you know, uh, mutually with your partners, and then you all became friends there. Um, and and so, okay, this brings me to this this whole sexy vacation. So you you went on, you went met right before a sexy vacation. I want to know what the fuck that sexy vacation is. <laughs> I have an idea because we're talking about swinger resorts. And okay. then, what's so special about this particular vacation? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, so the the location is is Desire in Cancun. It's uh, one of maybe three or four resorts that kind of it, clothing optional, adults only. That has a reputation for being lifestyle friendly, a place that that let people play in semi public spaces. They have theme parties. They have play spaces. They really cater to it. Yeah, they they do a, a lot of uh, work to make us all feel welcome. Yes. Awesome. So the the first time that we met, the couple's date that we went on was because Mr. Ams and I were about to go to Desire and Cat and Mr. Cat had been there a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So they had all the details on it. Um, And little did I know that you would need to bring three checked bags to a clothing optional resort because there's (laughs) many costume changes that happen. (laughs) One just for shoes. Yes. That's right. Really big, shiny Uh boots. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, swinger resorts or lifestyle friendly resorts are a really great way for couples who are interested in learning about the lifestyle and ethical non-monogamy to sort of see it in the wild um, and meet <laughs> other couples and talk with other couples. Um, we've met many, many people who uh, going to a lifestyle resort is the first time that they ever experienced ethical non-monogamy. Um, 
And uh, it's also, for some people, the only time that they experience ethical non-monogamy at home, within the boundaries of their, their city, their home. They are monogamous, but they like to go on vacation once or twice a year and and play around with ethical non-monogamy. And they feel safe doing mm-hmm. that really far from their homes. Mm-hmm. Because for most of us, we're not out and about telling everybody what we're what we're doing. <laughs> Walking around with an upside down pineapple in our shopping cart. Right. Uh, we nice. do have desire oh my necklaces. God. Is that a thing? What is with the is pineapples? It? Can you, is, is, it's an upside down pineapple? That means it's got to be upside down. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Upside down. And, wait, explain this because I need to know more. <laughs> Please. I think it's more of a joke than anything okay. else. It's, so uh, if you see a lady with an upside down pineapple, mm, I would just think maybe she did that. Don't kiss her. Yeah, it's an accident. Store. That's not, <laughs> it's not really a consent. I do that at the grocery exactly. store, though. I didn't no, know I was putting an actual vibes. pineapple. I thought oh. you wear it on your clothes. No, an actual pineapple? Like it's, at the grocery it, store? Well, so like it's become so big anyway in regular like hospitality. Right. Hosp- kind you can of. see it all over the place, but yeah, I think that the pineapple has kind of become the unofficial symbol of swingers of lifestyle um, uh, couples. There are other there was a conversation on our Discord community about like what are swinger sim- symbols and do any of them still work like anklets or garden gnomes or white rocks. <laughs> garden gnomes. <laughs> I, Grandma's a swinger. <laughs> yeah, yeah grandma. Garden- I think my housemate's a swinger. Totally. Totally. If you think they are, like your your radar for it gets pretty good after a while. But if you want to meet other lifestyle people, I, I would go to one of the lifestyle dating sites. You can kind of tell who in your neighborhood have become swingers. They start now that you're like, in it. They start dressing better. They start going to the gym. They yeah. start like taking care of themselves. All of a sudden, the men are like wearing better shoes, grooming. Just, oh, a lot of they grooming just look happens. good. Yeah, because yeah. they all like, of a sudden they're God. dating. They care, right? Yeah. I mean, when you're just like with your spouse every day, every day, you maybe sometimes think about not wearing such sexy underwear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you don't. You, you, you got your holy sweats on. I mean, not me. But, you know, yeah, yeah. not yeah. anymore because now I got competition. Right. But like <laughs> I have to compete for my husband all the time. Not That's really. Not I'm right. exaggerating. But, you know, I want to look my best. I want when I walk somewhere, when I go somewhere with him, I want him to still think that I'm the hottest one for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So and he's doing a, it for you, obviously. It's yeah. Right. Shoes now yeah. Working out. <laughs> so oh, it's so, hot. Th- this is a great point because <laughs> people get complacent in relationships yes. and sex. We are biologically not monogamous creatures. We are right. not. Right. It's proven. Right. And you can you can you can try and try to tell yourself that you are, but likely unless you live in a cave with your partner, you're, you're going to be attracted to, to something or someone that you see. It doesn't mean you're actually going to do something. Does it? You, that you, no, we like, you have you to have make desire. a conscious choice. So yeah, we have desire for other. That's like a natural yeah. thing. Yeah. But right. I like this, the drive. It's almost like this, this, the competition, because I fucking love Ooh, a good competition. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hey, you have no idea. I will be the best, the fun. And I want to speak about this because... <laughs> House parties, like, right? We just talked about the resorts, which yeah. mm-hmm. did you, so wait, what happened at the resort? Did you, did you all hook up? Yeah, are you all so they each were other? going. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. We so that trip, <laughs> what? that trip, we went on our own, but we had just came back from Desire two months ago and had the most oh phenomenal gosh. orgy we've ever. It was had. so much fun. It, it was uh, like. Magical. Okay. Speak right now is that good. I know. It was so good. <laughs> so when, when they were going on this vacation, like we gave them all the information, but as soon as they got back, we all got together and that's pretty much, you know, Upside down the beginning of us. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. 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 And then we, we've gone on that vacation with each other now. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that was that was what we just got back from. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, so no wonder y'all sparkly right now. But, <laughs> but, what, but what if? Okay. So some folks may not be able to access or afford some of these like very e- elaborate, beautiful resorts, which um, they are really gorgeous and really nice places. Because we were invited to hedonism, hedonism we're supposed to go. Yeah. Jamaica, yeah. right? And we, we didn't, didn't go. go but we, but not all that expensive. Like not, not any more oh. expensive than a regular all-inclusive. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Like well, three hundred dollars per person per day 
Yeah, uh, it depends. I mean, for it, food and drinks and it's entertainment. More sex. And, <laughs> yeah, it, it's more right. affordable than and, you would and think. Yeah. It is. <laughs> that's what I thought too. Of course, I'm not saying it's you know yeah. cheap, yeah. but it's not any more expensive than an, any Regular other kind of all inclusive resort. Yeah. Okay, that's all. So, I only was bringing that up because I want to talk about the house parties because those yeah, may well. be more accessible to people. So let's talk about what these sexy house parties are. We've all heard, I mean, at least me, maybe it's an urban legend, but about the key parties. Yeah. I don't know if those still happen. <laughs> or if I just dated myself. Not but anymore. Either way. So, what are, yeah. so what are those like? And can you, can you share some about that, please? So I've never been to a key party. No. No. And no. we've been to lots of parties, but there's never any bowl going around for your keys. Yeah. Yeah. Damn and, it. Sorry. <laughs> like, I think one of the biggest myths about swingers, about lifestyle people, is that they will fuck everybody and anybody, that they're totally indiscriminate. And I can tell you, we're picky. Yeah. We're very picky. And most lifestyle women that I know are very are, yeah. picky. And the men, too. They, they're not totally you know, indiscriminate. Um, so we've been to a lot of house parties and I would say that my experience with house parties has not been super positive until we started hosting our own. Um, and I, I'm the same. I mean, the house parties that we've gone to seem to be, you know, very structured. Okay. You know, 10 o'clock, someone comes out and everybody get naked or go. Every, all the women get oh, naked. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh I the mean, male it's, gaze. Yeah, right, 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 right. Oh, It'll be hell like, no. No, yeah. no. Women get into first. something <laughs> more. That is literally the conversation that we've had at some yep. of these parties. Like, show me your dick before I show you my bra. There is no way that I'm getting naked in front of a bunch of guys that are still like in their polo and slacks. It's not going to happen. Um, so, you know, we've been, some are great, um, but I think the smaller the party it is, the more pressure there is for everybody who's there to play with everybody else. And I don't dig that vibe. Again, mm -hmm. like I will play with people that I know already that I'm comfortable with, but I'm not going to go to a party and just randomly do duck, duck, goose. I'm going to go down on this guy. <laughs> That's right. It's not keys. It's duck, duck, goose. <laughs> yeah. That's Children's what's actually game. happening. Yeah. Um, so I, look, that vibe happens in a fair number of house parties. At larger parties, I think it's less so because there's just you can get away with a small number of people, just one partner or whatever, and and do your thing. But we decided if if we can't find what we're looking for, we're going to make what we you know the ultimate party that that we want to have. So um, uh, and we've had two so far. Yeah, and they're, and they're they've been amazing. Yeah, so, a lot of fun. So the first party was probably. Yeah. 30 people and the second one was 50 so we went for a larger party so there wasn't we had like a little um dinner party that that we call the accidental orgy because there's only eight people and we all ended up like Ooh, luckily luckily we liked everybody there and yeah. we knew everybody there and we were comfortable but it was a little small party we thought small was the way to go let's do that mm, it turns into an orgy yeah mm -hmm. yeah because you you all move as one group it's too small nobody wants to get nobody away nobody moves off and goes and no one ate too much obviously because you not can't, a lot of at eating. a dinner party i would have been yeah. like no mm, you do no. need to be careful what you serve your guests at a sex party for sure like maybe not a giant thing of cauliflower gratin or something some, that's some gonna make hummus. people no, hummus none none of that. no, no. hummus <laughs> little, little finger no garlic fake. shrimp oh my gosh. yeah garlic Gar mm, more garlic please yeah, sounds yeah perfect <laughs> yeah let's happen let's get crazy with garlic yeah so we we made sure that at the house party there was a lot of places that people could be where there was no play allowed. So the whole main level, there's no play. There's a, um, There were spaces throughout the house where couples could get away and just talk with each other. So the first party was heaven and hell, and we had little purgatory signs. And those were rooms where people could go and talk with their spouse and make sure they were on the same page. Um, and then we had our designated play space, play spaces. We had, I don't know, three or four play spaces. Yeah, we had like the, the basement was hell. And we had a dance floor down there and a bar and we had a couple of play spaces down there. And then the upstairs was heaven and it was, you know, lit up sort of with the light blues and the whites and it was really pretty. Galaxy and it was, lights. Oh, yes. I'm a huge fan of the galaxy lights, like <laughs> if in a play space. Um, yeah. And a couple couple play spaces up top. But on the main level, we had some food and we had, you know, cocktails and there was music on all three levels and everybody was in costume. So it was yeah. really fun. 
Yeah. So uh, it was a not a lock in party, but essentially at 10 o'clock, if you wanted to leave, that was fine, but you couldn't come back in because nobody was manning the door. Mm. Um, and, and there's no phones allowed. Privacy is a thing, I'm, I'm assuming. Right. We had a couple of like picture spaces because everybody's all into You're social like, media Joe these Biden days. In the corner, no, yeah. <laughs> Joe, Joe. <laughs> so we had some picture backgrounds, and, and people were in these awesome costumes. So at the beginning of the party, there really was no play, and there were a couple of places where you could take pictures, and and that was it. People put their phones away after that. Well, and even this bigger group, it's small enough that we knew everybody. Nobody yeah. came to this party that we didn't know. So, you know, everybody's so respectful of each other. We're all in the same boat, right? We're None of us want a picture of our, us out there for our kids to see or our neighbors to, to see. So everybody's sort of respectful of that. You don't have to even say it, really. I mean, yeah, I think we although do. I'm a big fan we of rules. We do. I know. She loves rules. <laughs> yeah. We I'm do say it. We do say it. But you don't have to... Most people don't want to, most people want to get invited back. That's right. And yeah. uh, so they're going to be respectful. They're, they're, you know, grownups that are going to follow grown up rules. But yeah, we, we had some rules written out. We did a tour of the house so people knew where they could play, where they couldn't play. We had signs right. on the doors. Um, maybe too many rules the first, <laughs> the first time Anzusel around. is a fan of rules. Um, but I, I just no, think. it was good. I wanted uh, the party to be a space where women really felt empowered to go up to somebody and say, I would love to play with you if you're interested. And a lot that happened a lot more at uh, at our house parties than um, than any other house party I've been to. Mm. I think women were very emboldened. <laughs> OK, time for a quick break. This podcast was made possible by Uberloop. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant that enhances sex and intimacy. We receive emails from listeners who have tried Uberloop, and the feedback is unanimous. We never knew lube could be this good. It's also less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes, and there are thousands of doctors recommending Uberloop to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks experiencing dryness. Uber Lube is without a doubt my favorite lube. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on my body. And it isn't just for sex. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth before an oral sex session. Totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's beautiful. It looks like a cosmetic product. So I just leave it out on my nightstand totally shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off, plus free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast is also free to you because of our amazing sponsors like Satisfier. Have you ever used an old, outdated vibrator? Are you ready to try some of the newest pleasure products by one of my favorite brands, Satisfier? My current go-to vibrator is Satisfier's Love Triangle. Don't let the petite size fool you. It offers the perfect amount of air pulse stimulation with a real suctioning feel, all combined with powerful vibrations. And it doesn't numb me out so I can have orgasm after orgasm after orgasm. Mm -hmm. Many Satisfier products even include their cutting-edge Bluetooth-enabled technology, and they're super affordable. Distance can disconnect people, but not when you have a device equipped with Satisfier's Connect app. You can actually control each other's pleasure in another room or another country. And right now, Satisfier is offering our lucky listeners 30% off any Satisfier when you go to Satisfier.com and enter code SHAMELESS30 at checkout. Again, if you're looking for one of our favorite new devices, go to S-A-T-I-S-F-Y-E-R.com and use code SHAMELESS30 for 30% off. Go check it out. You will be so satisfied. All right, back to the show. So you're so the, okay. So you y'all have sex with each other. You have sex with the other people. It's, so there's a lot of couples playing with other couples, but then sometimes people go off here, and so it's a lot of shared experiences. Although you did say, I believe this was you, Ams, maybe saying that um, there's times when you're at home washing the dishes and you know that your partner's out with someone else. So um, t- coming to the threesome topic, because threesomes are real popular in the, this, these days, um, and when, I know they probably have been for a long time, but our <laughs> listeners love it. It's like a it's a number one downloaded topic. Um, it's like our so favorite thing. You love. So do you, would you like threesomes more than foursomes than orgies? How are, are you having uh, threesomes with two penises and one your vulva, or is it two vulvas and a penis? And like, what's what's really what's going on here? 
Hmm. Well, we've done all of that. <laughs> we, over the, the course of the time that we've played in lifestyle, we've, we've experienced all of that. Um, we st- when we uh, started the idea of a threesome, we actually started it between the four of us. None of us had experienced a threesome. Well, we had some like, we all went to college, right? So we had some, <laughs> some experiences way back in the day. but Nothing worth talking about. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing to write right. home to. Um, so we decided to do the round robin threesome. Totally Each cool. one of the four of us sat out one round, and the other three got together. So that was our very first threesome experience in lifestyle. Well, what was great about this is that we all knew each other. We had known each other for quite a while by that time. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of trust, and we got to have a real conversation about what is it that we want, what do we want to experience. Oh, this is going to be so fun, and and the third or the, the, I'm sorry, the fourth person came to dinner after. That's true. <laughs> Brought the food <laughs> Which sometimes. was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, we actually started with the um, MFM threesomes, which would be two penis owners and, yeah. and, one and, vulva. and one vulva owner, which would be mm-hmm. me. I started. She got to go first. Yes. I volunteered as tribute. That's right. Um, and it <laughs> was phenomenal. I, it was unbelievable to have Two men that I knew so well and and trusted. And that cared about you. Absolutely. My biggest concern going into an MFM threesome was I was going to be fucking exhausted, like satisfying two men. How was I going to do this? What if I needed a break? That's what I always say. I'm like, that sounds exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. I want to hear more. I'm just resonating with that. Yes. But so I am a total reformed pillow princess. And the (laughs) nice thing about an MFM threesome is... If you need a break, you can just lay there and two men will make you feel good. Like Mm -hmm. you don't have to do anything other than let your, you know, pleasure show on your face and in your body. And they, at least my experience, they loved it. They loved touching me and kissing me and, and, uh, and just pleasuring me. And I didn't, I did lots of things when I wanted to, um, you know, I had their book dicks in my hands and, you know, (laughs) we did, we did all the different, um, positions, but if I didn't want to do anything, that was fine. (laughs) The guys just took over and, and satisfied me. So it, it was so good. I was like, Kat, you need to take a turn, like, right now. Yeah. Well, do, you, like, tap awesome. out? do you tap out? <laughs> You're like, all right. <laughs> Passing the torch. Yeah. yeah. I, I got my turn a couple weeks later, yeah. and they had had so much practice with AMS that they were really on their game. Yeah. I mean, I had so much fun with both of them, and I never felt like I was the one expected to please both of them, like I was supposed to do all the work. They really felt like they were there to lavish me with attention and love and mm-hmm. you know oh orgasms and there are many nope. orgasms there are what things about you the, can do yeah what well what, what about the f m f the f m f yes two the, vulvas yeah one yeah. penis yes enter a rebar and <laughs> well, someday, someday i guess we're gonna have to do that <laughs> well we did, we did we, get we, stuck we, on the mfm dial for a while kind of went back and forth us. a few times yeah. before we we gave the guys sort of their turn as the the guest the guest in the uh experience um it, it's great I, I you know i think the FMF threesome gets the most sort of attention, like Hollywood attention, because women are beautiful and two women are even more beautiful. Um, it's a, It can be a really fun and feminine experience. Um, I'm not super bisexual, like with, on a, a scale, like Kinsey scale. I'm pretty low on my bisexuality. It's very situational, bicurious. Uh, so I probably had four or five FMF threesomes with Kat and mm-hmm. and with a, a, a couple other friends. Um, it can be a little bit, sometimes you feel a little bit like you're on the sidelines and you let the the guy experience, you know, if it's with a unicorn, for example, the, 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 unicorn. You know, the unicorn, the mystical, magical unicorn, um, you kind of want to let them have their space. And if you're not super bisexual, there's not so much for you to do. So I was like getting water and towels and it was like the water boy. <laughs> um, but it, it's still fun. And the look on your guy's face when he's being pleasured by two women is it's, pri- awesome. it's priceless. It's like giving them the best birthday present, Christmas present, Hanukkah present, all combined. Yeah, they are never going to leave us. <laughs> <laughs> like you asked about 
<laughs> jealousy and worried about they're going to find someone else. No, you're like, they're oh, not. Carol, no. like you were just no. in your hand towels to get my dick sucked. Best, <laughs> wife, best wife ever. Yeah. Well, th- so if there's people out there listening that want this, they want to experience threesomes. Obviously, there's sites. We we love Field is one of them. This yeah. isn't mm-hmm. even an app for that. Yeah. But where so where can folks look and how would they go about being able to initiate or, or do this? Do they ask their friends? Do they look for pineapples? Amy? Do you yeah, where do pineapple you, I don't have a pineapple. Where, where do you find the unicorn? The yonicorn? No one knows. Ooh, <laughs> April the yonicorn. Are you my yonicorn? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, Field is a great app for threesomes. It, it's sort of like a gateway app because there's a lot of people there who don't identify as lifestyle people, but they want to have... I, there's a lot of vanilla people out there who want to have threesome experiences. Um, so you don't really need to go into the lifestyle community to experience that if you don't want to. Get drunk with your friends. <laughs> um, hey. We don't recommend that. Yeah, no, it's, that's not talk, our Well, up. talk about it first and then just start drinking. Yeah, yeah there you go. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Um, it, there are single women on lifestyle dating sites. There are not that many. There are single men on lifestyle dating sites. There are a ton. There are so many. <laughs> there are so many that it's basically impossible to call through oh all of the different profiles. Like uh, we did an episode on hot wifing uh, recently, so I created a single woman profile and I shit you not, within three days I had eight hundred messages. <laughs> and then I would get on to the app and start responding to the messages because I wanted to be a good Samaritan and respond to everybody. But then it shows that you're online. And so I'm, I'm like sending nice little no le- messages and in the background, ding, oh my ding, God. <laughs> ding. That's so I couldn't keep up with You it. don't take time. You just <laughs> That's right. Pace. Don't That's even right. fucking care about that. You're like, yeah. maybe no. Oh my God. There's That's that insane. many. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. I oh, love yeah. hearing these stories about this shit, man. This is so good. <laughs> so you're saying the penis owner is like, I'll be your unicorn. And the Volvo owners are a little more harder to find in terms of the unicorn space. Yeah. yeah, although I, we found plenty of women yeah. who enjoy having it. Like, go take the profiles away. I have not found the, the lifestyle dating sites to be great for meeting people with threesomes, with the exception of field. Um, but if you know people who are just sexually open, almost anybody, <laughs> I feel like, would be willing to have a threesome at some point if they're attracted to you. It's just mm-hmm. a very easy sort of gateway drug to the lifestyle. It seems like yeah. it. Yeah. I've been approached, and I didn't even know I was getting approached for a threesome. Right. You've been approached <laughs> like, so many times. So many times, and I'm like, oh, my God, they're so great. They love me, it's this like, couple. Um, no, and then they, Amy's yeah. like, trying to fuck you. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's right. are you that's sure? Right. Yeah. Like, are they, they're buying you all of your drinks and, like, yeah. asking, like, yeah. oh, that necklace but you just, is so pretty. You yeah, take I'm it as a big old compliment, though. It's not, you know, and, and I think even to a partnership, you're in a solid partnership, and someone is feels threatened that, or even on a threesome, just someone's just attracted to your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or whatever. It's a fucking compliment. Yeah, my partner's begging. In, thank you, and you don't get to sleep with them, or maybe you do. How about hello, unicorn? You know, but I mean, yeah. it, it's it's a wonderful thing. You're, you're special, Chip. You're beautiful. You're sexy, People think and I'm you're like, a great unicorn. Even though I don't know mm-hmm. if you've ever been one, but you would make a great. There was that one time in Scottsdale. Oh, that one time in Scottsdale. <laughs> no, but okay, that's its own story where she almost We're got. We're not abducted. telling that story. <laughs> we told it already. <laughs> oh my gosh. So okay. So the so we're talking about so you're talking about various ways to meet people and I because we get we do get this sex question a lot from people they're like okay we're a couple we want to open up we want to find the third um, or we want to find other couples and so you're saying a lot of the dating app sites haven't been the best in zero vices field has has worked out for you and then also if you just open people that you know um, to go engage with them so what about these things because I've also had this question from people how do I find sex parties you know sexy house mm-hmm. parties um, you mentioned the desire swinger resort so do you have any other recommendations for people who want to follow up and also for people who want you know have money can go to these things but also people who who don't you know like how are, how do they go and find these kind of sexy parties and things well, I would say the the apps, while we don't think they're fantastic for threesomes, they're great for meeting other couples. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're also a big place where a lot of um, sort of commercial parties are advertised. Advertised, sure. Yeah, like there's um, there are big parties that they put on, especially a Halloween. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So, yeah, they put these yeah. big parties on, and those are a lot of fun, and you can meet people by going to some of those kinds of things. And, you know, we we meet people all the time, some that we've played with and some that we haven't, but when we meet people that we like, we just sort of pull them in. Yeah. <laughs> and we sort of have created a community 
on our own of, you know, like the 50 people that came to the party. We've sort of just one by one, we meet a couple that we like and they meet a couple that they like and we've sort of introduced them. They would be good for our group. So I think it can be a slow build to a bigger kind of community that people Mm. could do that. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. To build on what Kat's saying, uh, the, the, the dating sites are fantastic for mm-hmm. meeting other couples. I, I don't actually, I think that's the, one of the only ways that you can meet other couples because if you start hitting on a couple at a bar, your the hit rate is going to be incredibly low. Um, so you unless, might get in a lot of trouble. Right. So <laughs> unless you're going to someplace like Desire or Hedo um, or Temptation, you're, you're not going to meet people who are necessarily going to be receptive to a couple hitting on another couple. So you almost have to go to the profile sites like Double Date Nation, Cassidy, uh, Alt Playground, um, SLS. I don't know. Those are the ones I can think of. SDC is, is big. Um, so uh, and they do uh, advertise meet and greets, which might be just small get togethers. They're not nobody's making any money off of it. It's just a group of people who like to host meet and greets at a, you know, a hotel bar or um, a brewery or something like that to people who are hosting big commercial events for lifestyle people like New Year's Eve parties, Halloween parties. Um, you know, theme parties are huge in the lifestyle community. We love to community. dress up. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just another way to play. <laughs> Where yeah. do you put your condoms and things when you're naked? Do you nature's pocket? <laughs> this... <laughs> Prison what? purse? No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was um, Am's, by the way. <laughs> no, wait. So we have the swinger bag. We bring a bag with yeah. us. The, the kids kind like of wonder bag? why. Like a repurposed <laughs> diaper bag. Like a huge bag. <laughs> but we, we've got different sizes. So if you yeah. just have your condoms, your lube, maybe a small toy with you, Advil, something in case you get a headache. We have just like a little bug out bag. But we also have an enormous bag. If we're going to a party, we might bring, a lot of them are BYOB, so we might be bringing our our, um, drinks with us, change of clothes, flip-flops, you know, a robe, something to change into if you don't want to put your corset back on or whatever's going on. and uh, yeah, you just, you bring it with you to the party. Most of the time, if it's a big party, we get a hotel. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's staying in a hotel or the hotel. If and, a lot of these like parties a suite are held where, in a hotel. where shit goes down in the suite or something. Yeah, maybe if we can, if we can it's get the after the party. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So people are concerned. Safety is a thing, right? People yeah. are concerned oh, yeah. with safety, and there's practices in place that are that because that's always been my question. Um, if you have what do you do you bring your like std papers like like yeah, yeah like i'm a uh a, a, i just got tested last week yeah uh, here it is. Uh, everything is clear except for i mean one thing are you down to deal with it cool let's do this yeah so that is a conversation so that you have absolutely yeah okay. it's well and and i'm sure your listeners know because i listen to you all the time like it's not safe sex it's safer sex right mm-hmm, every yeah. every encounter has some risks associated with it but in our experience, the lifestyle community is very diligent about condom usage. Um, that's never been an issue mm-hmm. with any of our partners. Um, uh, we personally get tested every six months. My husband and I alternate between, you know, so I get tested twice a year. He gets tested twice a year. So we're always, we always have pretty, you know, accurate results within mm-hmm. three months. I wouldn't say that that people have the conversation about STIs before they play as a normal practice, although it's a good idea. But certainly if anybody asks the question, we just show them test results. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that answer. Yeah. And I like that it's that feels good that it's people are practicing safety. Yeah. Well, You've well, gone to parties before. It and- seems to me a lot of the time the more the people that are more in the open world are on, or even like when we've had various folks in, who are sex workers on our show. They're almost more careful than non-sex workers are yeah. about about STIs, STDs, safety, et cetera. And maybe not almost. They probably most of them are. And I think same with the um, the open sex world. People are like, oh my god, how many open sex? There must be all these STIs running around. And in fact, you see people that are probably more responsible because they're more mm-hmm. educated about it. They're more have more into having open conversations about it. Um, so it's it's probably a, maybe a safer bet than just picking up someone at the bar, and not having oh, that yeah. conversation there too. So yeah, it's it's. Um, it's uh, and so a lot of people listening here, they're like, 
this is a dream world. And, you know, this might be a triggering conversation for some people because some people are in partnerships with someone that wants this and they don't. So if that's you, take a deep breath. And, um, you know, there's there we all have our different interests and desires. Well, Also, I like what you both had mentioned that you don't have to play. You don't go to one of these parties and experience if your partner is really wanting this. You play with each other. You don't know if you want it. You could go and play. I, I think that if you can if if you can get out of your own head maybe about the jealousy or the different pieces that may be hanging you up on uh, checking this out just going and and choosing not to have to have sex with anyone you don't yeah. have to do anything it's all consent and I think and that's babies, huge. baby steps into yeah. a lot of these things if you're new I just went to a uh, impromptu s- sexy party where we had no idea what would happen there was only 12 people and there was it was couples but then there was anyways it was mostly couples and we had no idea what would happen there and I so we went around setting boundaries and things in the beginning and, and like who we are, et cetera. I was like, I'm Amy. I identify as kinky, exhibitionist, voyeur. Um, and I'm also an introvert with extroverted tendencies. And you might see me here just in the corner by myself and not wanting to touch anyone. And you might or I'll see be me naked. Or uh, I'll be running around naked, which I, that happened very quickly. I was running around naked. But, but it doesn't mean that I, I'm it, actually, if you, you, I'm open to hugs. If you want to touch me in any ways beyond that, you have to ask me first. Um, and, and I may not want to engage in any sexual activity because my mood changes from moment to moment. And that's totally okay. There's plenty of people in there just touching their partner and they still get to be vibing in the energy. And there's plenty of people that were engaging and touching other people. And um, so there's so many ways to do it. And I love just hearing about the varieties of sexuality, of marriage, of married with Long children, <laughs> um, which is, that's not a judgment. It's most just like, yeah. fuck yeah, you guys are awesome. So <laughs> tell our, we could talk to you forever about this. But I know so we, we could. I'm like, I yeah. don't want it to end. Well, but they have a whole <laughs> podcast I know, about that's it. That's why you're doing the podcast. So our listeners, uh, how can our listeners go and listen? Listen to you and you know learn more from you, work from you. Where tell us about your socials, your podcast, etc. How can they find you? Yeah, so we are the two hot wives, number two, all one word. Uh, you can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere where you download a podcast. Our website is the same, two hot wives, and our social media handles are all the number two hot wives. Number, you're the number two hot wives in my Thank book. Thank you, number two. <laughs> 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 Ah, this was fun. Yeah, I learned a fun. lot, and I feel like you eased some of my maybe my uh, my aches and pains of the lifestyle mm. that I wasn't. I, you, when you don't know and you haven't experienced anything like that, all you do is kind of make up stories, right? And I like mm-hmm. hearing actual stories, healthy encounters. This can all actually improve a relationship. I love this. So thank you so much, and to all of our listeners, go check out Ams and cat on their podcast because it's really fun and uh they know their shit so that's cool and uh yeah swingers or not whichever way you're rolling m f m f m f a b c d e a b c exactly uh you uh can probably learn some things from these two these two humans and uh thanks so thank you and i can't close an episode of shameless sex without Giving you a prompt to uh, give us five stars on iTunes. That's it. That's actually a command. You must do it. You now. must do it. Or I will spank you it's, consensually. Uh, this is a free resource. <laughs> so people out there, if they're whether they're in the lifestyle community, they want to have a threesome, or they just are interested in expanding their sexuality, they can find podcasts like Two Hot Wives, like Shameless Sex. So the more reviews we get, the more folks out there can improve their sexuality and open up their brains and beyond. So go ahead and do that. I challenge you right now. Right now. Anyway, that's the only challenge. And I can't leave this episode without saying I love you, Amy. And I love you too. I love wine. Margins Wine <laughs> is my favorite. Go to marginswine.com and check out why Amy and I have been huge fans for the last, I think it's been three years. I have no concept of time anymore because of all sorts of reasons. But we love it. And it's not because of the wine. It's not because of the wine. <laughs> I just improved my brain. Uh, but you can go to marginswine.com because there's only three to four max uh, releases a year. And you would just get a newsletter to let you know when those are released. So you can buy, and if you want to buy three or more bottles, you save 10% by Shameless Sex. 10 is the code. I'm getting so good at this, though. I'm yeah. like, so fast. I'm going to be, I'm actually quitting Shameless Sex. I'm going to become an auctioneer. You all ready? <laughs> and Shameless Sex 15, if you buy six or more bottles, will save you 15%. All right. Are you ready to say adios? Si, uh, adios, bienvenidos. Uh, ciao for, oh wait, that's ciao you. Ciao for now. See you next Tuesday. 
Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.